Miss Christina Kai or Miss Earth Singapore 2020. Let's welcome her on screen. Oh. <laughs> Hello, Moharlikans and everyone who are with us now. Good afternoon, and I hope you're having a good day. Uh, today, we're having a guest, a beautiful, a beauty for a cause. Uh, she's a beautiful guest coming from one of the most powerful countries in the world, one of the most powerful players in Asia, and a country where most of the millionaires come from. And I'm very excited to meet her because it's not because of that that she's here with us. Um, let me give you a briefer of uh, our guest. She's worked with a couple of brands and uh, renowned designers in the country. And I'm sure if you've been to Singapore, you must have seen a picture of her on the billboards, in magazines. She was a top 10 finalist of the Miss Chinese International 2018. She was also Miss Singapore Chinatown 2017. And she won the title of Miss Water Singapore in 2019. She's recently appointed to represent her own country, Singapore, to Miss Earth 2020. So everyone, please join me in welcoming the 21-year-old guest, Miss Christina Kai, or Miss Earth Singapore 2020. Let's welcome her on screen. I was Hello. supposed to Hi, Christina. <laughs> Do you want us to call you Christine, Christina, Chris, or Tina? Christina is yeah. fine, and unfortunately, I'm not one of the millionaires you <laughs> want to meet. <laughs> I was so I was so excited to ask you that because you know I've read the statistics on on uh, regarding Singapore, and it's like it's saying one at least one of the six in the neighborhoods in a six household has like millionaire. Wow. <laughs> anyway, we're you know one of them. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking about you being Miss Earth today. So, Christina, apart from you being busy, being a beauty queen, I've, I I know that you come to, uh, you go for De La Salle, a college of arts. What do you do specifically as an, as a, as an art student? Um, I'm currently pursuing a diploma in dance at La Salle College of the Arts. And dance has always been something that it's with me. I've started dancing when I was around three, four, and I kind of like realized that, you know, I can't live without dance, which is also why I've decided to pursue as a education and a career actually out of school. I'm actually a full-time, uh, more like freelance at the moment because of school, um, a dancer, choreographer, and performer. So yeah, I basically just danced my whole day in school. <laughs> Well, it's very interesting because I've seen your profile on Facebook and it says a lot about you also going into a bit of a martial arts. What, what, do you do martial arts? Because you've followed like different pages of martial arts apart from you being on stage and performing. <laughs> You're an interesting girl. <laughs> yeah, there was, there was a period of in time. Actually, I'm still pretty interested, but there, were, there, there was a a um, specific period in my life where I was very interested in Taekwondo and I think maybe I was influenced by the Korean videos where they, influ uh, they infuse dance and Taekwondo together so I was really interested I mean until now I still looking for a chance to attend Taekwondo courses if possible you know I think it's very interesting to learn different kind of of sports and even dance by itself like currently i'm actually learning pole dance like i'm like i just started not too long ago so yeah i'm always open to learning new things and you know receiving new information i was just telling you about like one of the interviews i've seen you dancing like a tiktok dance so can you show us your move later <laughs> See, I'm segueing that. I was thinking about how can I segue Christina dancing on a TikTok music, <laughs> like on the video that I've seen. So maybe I can ask you to do that later. So Christina, uh, aside from you being a beauty queen and a college of arts, really into dancing and martial arts at the same time, I know you speak a bit of different languages, right? Aside, aside from your Chinese, uh, what languages do you speak apart from uh, now you're using English talking to us? Um, I, of course, like you've mentioned, I speak Mandarin as well as um, it was a compulsory for us in Singapore to learn our mother language. And on top of that, um, I tried learning Korean 
may not be the best, but at least it brings me around to the toilet when I'm in Korea. You know, at least and I can like ask like how much uh, a product is. So I guess you know it's um uh, you're travel not friendly. friendly. Yeah, I yeah. try I tried to be I tried to take the assessment for I tried to because I there was a period of time I really wanted to pursue my studies in Korea. So I wanted to master this language, but um, you know, plans change. But I'm still in love with the culture itself. Yes. So what is it like as studying just a bit of Korean language or or just going or really going into school to like finish, you know, different uh, a few years to talk about Korea and the language itself and the culture? Is it like going to school or just uh, crash courses? Um, it began with actually a self-learning crash course. Like I bought a Korean language um, 101 and I studied by myself. And I realized that maybe because I was able to pick up the language fast because of my love for the culture and their media. Hence, like it was really easy for me to start speaking Korean. So that's when I decided to enter, like enroll myself in the language school where I started learning Korean like properly with all its grammars and like vocabulary. But I think it was also maybe the either like my time schedules doesn't allow or I can't remember anymore. It's been a few years. <laughs> but I, I kind of like stopped my journey into mastering Korean language. Yeah. Okay, so um, being a Christina Kai now that you're a beauty queen, growing up, how has it been for you? Um, I think my, my whole life has been full, full of surprises actually because being a beauty queen wasn't something that I envisioned myself to be if I were to ask maybe a maybe eight-year-old Christina it was definitely not something that I see myself because dance has always been a part of my life and I only see myself with dance when I was younger so my whole life was really full of surprises because even not talking about pageantry but I have so many other opportunities that pops up that I seriously didn't think myself doing but maybe because of me being such a risk taker at times or adventurous person I just like why not you know I just take up the chance which is how I became a pageant queen actually so you know things I think things are meant to be somehow or some way you know God just gave us a certain path that you know I may not realize <laughs> Yeah. Um, okay. So growing up, there must have been someone very important in your life that has made an impact of who you became or who you are now. So who was that? And uh, what is it in particular that you've admired from that person that made you become Christina Kai right now? Um, okay. I, I feel like maybe this might sound, <clears throat> might sound like a cliche answer, but like the most prominent figure in my life would definitely be my mother because I'm not saying I'm a lonely kid, but <laughs> like, I just don't really like hang out around. Uh, maybe because of my whole hectic schedule with dance, I'm always like traveling on and off. You know, I don't really hang out after school with my friends. So my mom has always been the prominent figure in my life. And what really makes me look up to her or how she has impacted in my life is how she may be a strict mom, but yet she is still pretty free in how I can make my choices and um, she let me choose the things that I want to do and pursue on. And she's always there with me, which is a very surprising thing to my friends actually because every rehearsal, every performance, she will be there and if she's if she, the the performance allow her to help she'd rather be behind the stage to help me with my preparation rather than watching me in front of the stage so she has really um helped me to shape in like my discipline and how 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 should i be more prepared before a show or a performance and i guess this also helped me in how i proceed into going to pageantry Okay, being a mom, you know, normally when there's a mom behind the stage, in front of the stage, looking at you on stage, they normally dictate. <laughs> they normally dictate for you what to do. <laughs> does she does? <laughs> does she do that to you? I'm like, does she does she dictate like what you're gonna say and what you're gonna do on stage? No, she actually doesn't really dictate what I do or say. She's actually she's just there because 
she's genuinely very intrigued with the arts, I would say, or just entertainment. Because I have two older sisters, actually, and both of them, she tried to make them dance. <laughs> but, like, it failed. And turns out, I, I have a genuine uh, interest in dance before she even made me attend dance class. So she enjoyed the whole idea of, like, following me just to watch me dance. Like, she don't, like, say, like, oh, oh don't hang out with this friend. Oh, why are you doing this? But maybe at times, if I were to misbehave, she would like, oh, I'm paying lessons you know so you should you know focus on class <laughs> but other than that no, all is fine you know I, I mean of course if i really there are a few things where maybe she may not be happy to see me doing but at the moment i have not um uh done them so i'm on the safe zone <laughs> you're saying you uh you have sisters as well you have two two sisters like there's three of you in the family three siblings yeah. Oh, okay. And you're the middle or the uh, youngest or the eldest? I'm the youngest. I'm the youngest. Oh, the youngest. Oh, okay. <laughs> so how, how is it growing up with your sisters? Did, uh, did you have like uh, mostly fights with them or are you best friends with them? I would say uh, I'm definitely the pampered one as what they always say with the youngest child. But I think the, they, they really shaped me to who I am today because um, my sisters, are, we have a huge gap between um, all of us, I mean, me and my two sisters, because um, my second sis is actually 32 and my older sis is 34. So growing up with oh. them, you know, the whole, not, not saying generation gap, but like, you know, the whole interest is a little bit different already because I may be a kid, but they will be probably in high school. So what they're interested in will be different from me and spending time with them kind of matures me faster because I will watch what they're watching. So they also made me comfortable with talking to older people. Like I'm not, I'm not afraid to talk to people because they're always like involved with external activities and I'm just like tagging along and which kind of forced me to interact with people, which is really great. Like I really enjoy um, growing up with them. And sometimes I think I give them some youth in their life because... <laughs> They're the spies of the family. <laughs> yeah, you know, the, the fact that they have to play like shadow play with me. Can imagine them being 16, 18, you know, at the teenage years where they want to be cool and then they're playing yeah. shadow or picnic at home with me. I think, I mean, I'm I'm the youth of the family. I'm the I'm the, You're I'm, the life. I'm the life. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I, I think that plays uh, you're playing a, an important role in your family by being the light and the life of everyone. Uh, that you make them all happy, and I can see that even when you're around with your friends, you're like the the joker type. You're like the fun, the funniest person in the group that you know just gives them sunshine whenever you talk or you you bond with them. So, how many friends at the moment do you have? Like friends, close friends, even at uh you know when you're doing the long Miss Earth uh, preliminaries which is like taking place for two months. How uh, or do you still bond with them uh most of the time like you did when on your normal days? Mm, I think what makes me able to bond with them um, during this Miss Earth um, preparation was also because of the whole situation that it's a virtual pageant. Because, you know, imagine if like it's a physical pageant now, I'm definitely having a hard time to bond with them. And if you were to ask how many friends I have, I would say I have a lot of friends. <laughs> but if how many <laughs> real friends, you know, close friends that I actually have, I'd probably say like maybe four, five. I, I don't really have. I, and I, I enjoy being in a small group because I, I find it hard to actually communicate and keep the conversation going with every single person in the group at the same time if the group is too big, you know. So I usually stick myself to a few people and they were actually very supportive of my whole even though it's only been maybe a month of the Miss Earth uh, preparation, but they've been very supportive. Some of them even coming down to my photo shoots or video shoots to help me. And, you know, some of them um, ensure like uh, take some behind the scenes photos for me or like uh, help me adjust my makeup or like the dresses if it's out of place. So I'm very grateful for them, you know, for always supporting, even though it's definitely not something that they would um, dwell in. Uh, being a Singaporean, um, I I actually have met myself and my husband has have met like two beautiful Singaporean people were in, in one of our travel uh, travels to Thailand. Um, being a Singaporean and uh, 
Singapore being such a powerful country. Uh, what do you think is the biggest struggle right now in the economy of Singapore? Uh, like, uh, does like uh, does powerful government like yours <laughs> have a problem as well, <laughs> especially during this pandemic? What do you think is the biggest struggle of your government, and what are you doing as a part of it? I, I'm sh I'm sure there's uh, a few struggles here and there, but most of these struggles are like you know kept within the walls. <laughs> it's not it's like our know, internal struggle because. Um, as you have said that our government as a whole or our country as a whole is very powerful you know we have like one of the most powerful passports when we travel but you know at the end of the day sometimes when it comes with uh, when a government is very powerful of course the things that sometimes we have to say uh, may not be able to may most probably kept within us which is also why Singapore is so known to be people who complain a lot <laughs> Because you know, <laughs> because you know, you we're know just you. voicing out. Yeah, yeah, we're just voicing out our maybe um, um annoyance or like dislikes. But because of how happy we are with the power that we have in the government, you know, we all we we complain, but yet we are still grateful. Am I making sense? You know, we may yeah. not. Yeah, we're still grateful for what they're doing. But, you know, there are times we complain. And the struggles that I would say that we're going through now during this whole COVID, I would, it's definitely financially, I would say, because, you know, a lot of businesses are not... It, I, I can't go on. And it also affects me because I'm in the entertainment industry. So there's a lot of shows that were cancelled. And that's, like, a struggle that I'm trying to, like, handle. Like, my bank account is pretty bad right now. <laughs> So anyone who would like to get the services of Christina, she's just there, available. <laughs> go fund me, go fund me. <laughs> but I'm sure you're one of the millionaires already. <laughs> we go back to that statement. I, I try to show that I'm a millionaire, but, you know, maybe sometimes I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> but but you know why I'm talking about that is because I know Christina is a, is just one person among 5.7 million Singaporeans who are living in the in the country who are millionaires. <laughs> I still go back to that subject, <laughs> and there will never be. What I believe in is that there will never be a, an effective government if the people don't talk about what the or don't criticize the government for what it does. So like I know Singapore. I've been there a couple of times and I, I've always loved Singapore's environmental look. It's so green, even in the proper city like the orchards and, uh, uh, oh my God, you, your country is so beautiful. There's only one I don't like, which I don't like in my country as well, the weather. <laughs> but apart from the weather, it's a perfect place to live in, raise a child. I don't know. I'm, I'm just like an advocate for promoting Singapore. <laughs> I think you know, I think we should be Mr. Singapore. <laughs> <laughs> and the Sentosa. Um, let's talk about, uh, because it's, it's an environmental issue in the Philippines right now. Uh, you know, the Manila Bay is uh, like, uh, we're putting white sand, uh, timber, uh, well, I hope it's not temporary. If it works out, then it's going to be. I know Sentosa, what, when I thought of Manila Manila Bay dumping white sand in there, and now there's an issue. People are talking about it. I said Tosa is similar to that. Your coastline, you're too small as a country, but your coastline, St. Tosa, is where everyone goes to when they're in Singapore. What do you think has it done to your country's economy, the St. Tosa, as a tourism capital or one of the capitals of Singapore? I'm sure Sentosa is definitely one of the, the tourism spots that brings in a lot of revenue for our country because oh, they're always cool. constantly like, that's the millionaire going on. <laughs> they, they're constantly <laughs> upgrading, like trying to make the spot better. And you know how there's Universal Studios now at Sentosa, Resort World Sentosa. And, you know, there's so many attractions, you know, water park, you know, aquarium, you know, even yeah. I love going to Sentosa. And I feel, um, even though maybe some people might argue it's an artificial uh, beach in some sense it's like a, it wasn't really there in the first place I, I still feel that it, it's still good it's still a positive um, element to our country because that's the whole thing of how Singapore works in some sense is regardless what we try to develop we we'll always try to think of what sustainable ways we can work on so actually a lot of our attractions in Sentosa are all using reusable um, 
sources and we have like water recycling systems because we are not we don't want to show that if we were to um, develop urbanly means we are causing harm to the environment so if you were to really see from a bird's eye view of Universal Studios a few of our roller coasters has um, solar panels on top of it so that we actually are using renewable um, energy instead yeah so uh, talking about uh you're, you're big your facebook is big on recycling reusing uh zero plastic if you can't really avoid you know um recycling them um what is it about your advocacy uh, that you bring out from this earth and how wh what role do you play in that recycling stuff because that affects your environment your small country there's a lot of greens how do you do that like uh yeah, so maybe you can tell us the magic about, you know, recycling and preserving the nature. Yeah, sure. So before I do go into all that, um, for my, my advocacy is actually to reduce plastic pollution because to me, um, it's not really, it's not just affecting the marine life, but it's also accelerating climate change because um, I feel that sometimes it comes down to um, the whole um, problem of people neglecting how they're actually disposing their waste. I'm not saying that, you know, you must immediately eliminate all the plastic in your life. You know, sometimes we need to take a step at a time. But at the end of the day, we need to look at how we actually um, re, re, you know, rethink how we dispose our waste because even now during the cold COVID situation, you know, you see, I'm sure you've seen some of this happening. You know, people are disposing their PPEs on the on the roadside, yes. and I've seen uh, people even hanging the masks on on trees. Like that's not your trash can in the first place. So the whole idea, even you were to say Singapore is so green and so beautiful, but it was all due to the effort of people working. You know cleaning up this place but yet there are still people who are still throwing their trash um, like wherever is possible or just littering their trash around so there, there are still um, it's, it's a facade I would say at times but it was also something that I, I want to encourage people which is also through my advocacy I actually sometimes organize beach cleanup um, with my community as much as possible despite the COVID-19 situation because um, it kind of also highlights to people, I want to show people that, you know, even though the main best way to actually reduce plastic pollution is through its um, source, like the manufacturing process, but yet, you know, we need to consider our waste disposal because the trash that are at the beach really highlights how how are we actually using plastic and lots of plastic actually wash up at our shore and most of them are all single usage of plastic so it's actually a very jarring sight especially when i bring my friends there for the first time for my for beach cleanup like it's their first time and then they realize that how much harm that we're actually causing just by simple actions of throwing a plastic bottle into the, the trash out like into the environment yeah imagine how many tons of uh, garbages uh, we we take from the big bins like uh, steel bins and tons of uh, trucks that we dump somewhere if if there's trash in the city we dump it somewhere you know suburb area but of course like a country that's like singapore very small it's like within the city itself so dumping is one big problem in fact it's it only doesn't happen in singapore it happens everywhere else and more maybe in the poorest countries in asia um last year there was this issue i think more than a year ago there there was this issue that canada and us you know the tons of garbage they dump in asian countries and uh, primarily philippines Singapore, uh, philippines malaysia there were issues like that and even our president had threatened uh, canada if you're not taking the tons of your garbages back to your country <laughs> i'm gonna do something uh, what was your stand on that because singapore is like most it, it, it's almost our neighbor country, uh, yeah, like yeah. Uh, Thai, uh, right. Malaysia as well. So We're yeah, all, like beside each other in some sense, in some way. But yeah. even if you're talking about my stand on this whole situation, is it? Uh, if I did I interpret the correct the question correctly? Yeah. What is your, yeah? What is your stand in you know uh, powerful countries like U.S. and Canada dumping garbages in in countries like uh, the poorest countries in Asia? One of us, uh, one of them is actually Philippines and then Malaysia at that time. Yeah. So there were tons of garbages uh, um, collected from the shorelines, and then we found out it's from Canada. So if if it happens to Singapore, what is going to be your stand on that? What role would you play? 
for sure, you know, I, I I won't agree to this whole situation where powerful um countries dumping their trash on poor countries because especially for Singapore, you know, how small our country is. I mean, it's evident in the world map, you know, just by looking at it, you can't even see us. <laughs> you know, it's just that one red dot, you know, to actually like look for it. And even f before we even talk about powerful countries dumping trash in our land even ourselves with our growing population and such a small piece of land we are also having trouble with our trash for sure because our landfill are going to be filled up in just like 10 to 15 years which is quite a jarring amount of time because it may seem like a long time but you know we're already reaching the end of 2020 so you That's know it. it's actually quite scary how time is passing and if people were to even dump their trash here in our country i think in just less than a year i think even just our singapore our own land country it will be filled up in less than a year i feel like genuinely if powerful countries so to dump their trash on our country because in the first place there's no space <laughs> so wherever yeah. they're dumping will be on our tourism side our housings and you know that's it's it's a bit sad that this is actually happening happening and people are tapping the on the whole issue of like you know we they play the, the power play in some sense they're using their power to to try to make their country look better by putting their trash into like other countries it's interesting to know that you, you said your friends help you with you know <laughs> picking up garbages from the shorelines even and then uh you can do these small things at a time but are you do you belong to like a, an advocacy group about this recycling that uh, you know does projects about it do you belong to a group or you spare it yourself being a star and everyone looks up to you Okay, I'm not that big of a star in my country, yeah. but of course, uh, I, I try my best. I'm actually not, um, I don't really organize, I have, a, I'm not, not saying, I, I organize my own beach cleanup for sure, but I don't have a group of my own. So, but I do follow other groups in some sense. So, I actually in this uh, beach cleanup group that I, t we are always like updating each other on maybe the weather forecast on the day where we're going for beach cleanups. There's currently almost, I think more than a thousand or two thousand now people like there's a lot of people and you know we started this whole uh beach cleanup group because um okay not not i started i followed the group because um when during the circuit breaker in singapore which is our lockdown in some sense um it was during the monsoon season as well and a lot of trash are like being um the tides are bringing in all the trash onto our shoreline and it was you know, we can't turn a blind eye to the trash that is in our environment. So that's how the beach uh, cleanup group was organized in the first place. And if I were to say why, um, what other groups, and I, I would say I'm not really in one group. Like I try my, my best as long as something to tackle on the recycling, the whole plastic issue in Singapore. I try my best to help. So I'm actually like all over the place trying my best to provide my aid, my, my, my helping hands to people. Because I, I compared to them, I would say that sometimes I may not as be I'm not as knowledgeable as some of the environmentalists in my country. But because my love for the environment makes me want to help them because I feel that it's my job as well. So I wouldn't say I would want to create a group, but definitely I would always emerge myself to help out with all the groups that are happening in Singapore. All right. Uh, th that's enough for a, <laughs> for a kind of advocacy. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm more excited into talking about you uh, being a beauty queen. Wow. <laughs> so you were Miss Queen's International 2017. That was your first uh, pageant so far? Yes. In your um, that was the, the, the one, just now when you're giving me the, you're giving the introduction mm -hmm. spiel, um, the Miss Singapore Chinatown uh, title was the one that brought me to that pageant. All right. So, um, um what happened for this particular Miss Earth? The last year you was uh, you were Miss Water Singapore, twenty nineteen, and then something happened. Um, you were uh, is that only because yeah uh, you were on lockdown, so you had to be announced uh, you know officially as a Miss Earth candidate for twenty twenty? Is that because yeah. of the lockdown you didn't have yeah. like the actual pra pra uh, pageant? Yeah, we weren't really. It wasn't really because of the lockdown, but of course. 
it something to do with the whole COVID um, pandemic situation because um, events can't go on. You know, activities are only restrained to a group of five in Singapore mm. at that point of time. I think because we, um, our government calls it the circuit breaker, and at that point of time, I think it was phase two. Phase two, yeah, phase two. But gatherings are only we we are all able to continue with our life. Jobs are going back as normal students going back to school but everything is going as per normal except for events and you know um, even sports some of the activities are only restrained to five so because of whole this whole situation my organization decided to go forth into appointing a winner instead of continuing the pageant so it was actually a bit sad because i was actually looking forward to um, the pageant itself and some people were definitely asking because uh, my appointment came after the virtual pageant of miss philippines earth and people were actually wondering like why don't you you do the whole virtual pageant thing as well. So I, I'm sure I'm I'm definitely not the organizer. I'm definitely not my director. But if I were to look it in uh, from my, her point, maybe it may not be her exact point. But I feel one thing that we decided not to go on was the whole um the, the whole human interaction in this pageant, I would say, because every year we have like a coronation dinner. So, you know, you really get to see the girls up front, you know, you get to know them. And that's the most like exciting part in the pageant. Yeah. And, you know, to hear the cheers as a, as a contestant, to, to see, to really experience the jitters and excitement going on on stage really changed the whole dynamic of the pageant, which is also Especially why I... Especially your personality. You're like the kind who'd like, you know, to feel fun about it. And this, there's no fun on virtual. Yeah, like, because, you know, <laughs> I want to appear for myself. Hi, my name is Christina from Singapore. <laughs> <laughs> you made different voices to cheer you up. <laughs> I, I clap for myself. <sighs> So good. So yeah. good. Yes. <laughs> and I and I, I'm I'm gonna judge for myself and I think I got like the the, the highest <laughs> the highest score in this area. Yes. So I'm gonna be Singapore. Yes, Singapore. <laughs> Miss Earth 2020. <laughs> <laughs> Let's claim it now. So what do you think makes you unique? Like what do you have like that stands out among the crowd of all beauty queens? Now that you don't have anyone right there, like in front of you is a cameraman, which is gonna be your boyfriend. Walter, <laughs> who's right there? <laughs> what's what's gonna make you win? Do you think to be Miss Earth 2020? Um, I'm definitely not. Um, I, I God didn't give me the gift of height. Um, so I, I'm. I wouldn't say it's something that I'm lacking. But of course, if it's a physical pageant, you know, it will be very obvious. But I feel like <laughs> what really, like, yeah, yeah, I probably need like so. maybe five, six, seven. I have no idea what I need to invest in. But of course, I'm not really um affected by the problem of my height that I may not be like a super tall, like a super model kind of height. But I feel that what really makes me stand out is my whole um happy go lucky kind of like personality. Because I, I feel I'm I'm in general I'm not afraid to show people like who I am. If I want to laugh, I laugh. You know, I don't I don't feel like I need to to hide any part of who I really am because I feel as a beauty queen, I feel it's a position where it should be approachable to people. If people need help, they should be they will be thinking, oh, I can approach Christina for to to ask for help. You know, if let's say um I have a environmental um activity going on, oh I oh I think of Christina, you know, because you know she's very easy to work with, she's very easy to talk to. So that's how I really want to hope that I I'm being yeah, eh? <laughs> I that's how I hope that I'm bring like kind of like bring myself across to people, which is I feel my personality is what really um make me stand out in amongst all the girls. Okay, I I'm just curious, what made you win like a Q and A? Normally, normally you're on stage, you're having these jitters, and then you're so it's it's a nerve wracking experience to be there on stage and be asked a question. What made what question uh made you win on your previous uh, pageants? Like oh, the Mr. Uh, yeah. Sorry for the uh, the 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 one where no, I was the winning water. question. Ah, yes. okay, okay. So actually, the question for me, I think I was quite lucky. The the question was quite easy. The question was basically asking me what are the pressing environmental issues going on in the world. So 
and that was it there was no why there was no um further explanation asking me to explain um but i gave my i gave i kind of like went on so i actually mentioned a few uh, suddenly i'm telling you my answer <laughs> like i was <laughs> i was actually uh, i mentioned some um uh, issue and some of them were like food wastage, um, plastic pollution, uh, climate change and whatnot. And I went on to saying that if I'm crowned Miss Earth Singapore 2019, I would want to educate people and inspire people. I want to teach people the five R's because I feel that, you know, if even let's say reuse, reduce, recycle, if we weren't able to rethink and respect we won't be able to effectively proceed with our environmental causes. So, I mean, this is not exactly, it doesn't seem so effective now, maybe because I'm not on stage. It's not the same stress and plus you're not timed, uh, you know, you're not timed for your answer that's normally yes, just yes, yeah, yeah, I'm like taking my own sweet time, but at the point of time, I really felt like, Oof, that was it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, yes, I did it. You know, and first I was like, I know myself. It. yeah, and I really stood there for damn very long, very long. I was like, oh, my my feet is hurting. Ah, I keep shifting yeah. my foot, like up and down because there, oh, the heels, so painful. Wearing, but then, wearing five inches heels at least and then standing yes, there yes. for of hours and then these jitters and the nerve wracking you know the butterflies that you feel within you or just <laughs> flying around <laughs> you don't know what to say what to do you don't i think you even tend to forget to drink water or to feed yourself <laughs> yes <laughs> yes and sometimes thinking thinking about this. yeah and i i know this i don't know um what goes on with other pageant queens in like their mind but when doing the q a session i'm quite i feel i would say i'm quite a critical thinker in some sense like when i stand behind i actually listening to the other questions that was brought up as well so in my head i'll be like actually secretly like answering in my head like oh okay what will i answer okay okay not bad not bad okay next one next one mm -mm. oh oh no i don't know this thank god i'm not asked <laughs> i'm like you need time to prepare <laughs> for some questions <laughs> I, I i hear some of the questions and i was like oh no thank god i'm still standing at the back smiling and <laughs> posing <laughs> so, thoughts going through in my mind so what do you do like in preparation for your two months you have a two months long preparation for your preliminaries and i'm sure those are scored like from the moment you went on live ask uh, or talk about being hashtag uh, the earth talk something I'm sure you are scored already. So uh, what preparation or how, how far have you gone in terms of saying, I'm prepared to be on, I mean, virtual stage <laughs> on November 29th? <laughs> because right after you were pronounced or you were in Miss Singapore, uh, Miss Earth Singapore 2020, you went on live for our Earth Talk. And then so now that it's been like about two weeks already, how, how have you performed? Do you think, where do you stand right now? Are you ready to be on virtual stage for Miss Earth Crown? <laughs> I would say I would um if I were to look at the logistics side, I would say I'm pretty prepared. You know, I have my things set up. You know, come on, I have a flag even for this talk. I right know. Now. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I would say that. You know, I'm pretty prepared in the administration and logistic kind of part. But you know, when it comes to the real um pageant itself. I, maybe the whole situation that is virtual now kind of makes me talk more. I have no idea. And it's kind of a bad thing going on because well, naturally... But it's good for you. But it's good for you. It shows your natural personality. Oh, yeah, true. For sure. Yeah. Especially the earth talk, you know, when it's something more casual, you know, I really can show myself. But then I'm a bit worried for the Q&A because, you know, there's always a time frame. And, you know, now that the fact is, is a, a, a virtual, I don't really feel the sense of time now. I don't know mm -hmm. if I'm making sense because yes. you know there's no people, there's no music, there's no MC going on like to prompt the thing like oh you left there's no no there's left thirty seconds or kind of thing. Yeah. So I, I will keep like going on and on because I just love talking so much and I, I hope you realize that by now. Because <laughs> I've seen it from your interviews and it was just so fun. You're like you you're forgetting that you're Miss Earth and you know most of the time it should be poised or something. But yeah, because you're authentic. Um, but that's the thing, you know, that's that makes a big difference uh, to be seen virtually and being able to talk to people like us who interviews you, get the chance to get to know you. Um 
it doesn't happen on, on, on previous occasions without the pandemic. It, it didn't happen. So now that you are going to be on, I think the, the two months preliminaries are giving you that chance to shine on your own. And when you're on your virtual stage, what do you, uh, what do, you do now for the Q&A? Because it's the most uh, difficult part of, or, or, or of winning the crown, I think, working on winning the crown. What do you do in working on Q&A? I know y your English is good. You can be understood. Um, even when you're talking fast in English, uh, everyone could understand you. It's very clear. So you're a, that's not a problem already. So, but when you're time uh, conscious about answering questions, what do you do with your Q and A? Do you listen? Do you look at pageants and you know pick up uh, questions from there and then uh, put notes on your answers as well? Do you do that? For sure, for sure. I actually have a, a, a folder on my computer where I, I titled it pageant research. So what I do, I actually look at uh, past pageant questions. And then I also think of what possible um, questions that might come up regarding that same question. Because I don't know if you realize, sometimes the questions are quite similar. It's just that the whole topic or... They, they kind of like switch, um, um, form their question a little bit differently, but actually they mean the same thing. Yeah, so I kind of like practice on my own and also continuously to um, keep up to date with news and, and regardless it's environmental news or like general happenings in the country and the world, I constantly make sure that I'm not, I'm up to date so that if in case, you know, there's a new um, trendy topic that happens and they like ask about it like i'm ready to tackle the question as well so it really comes down to a lot of research and i think that's something that you know when new pageant um uh, new girls who want to join pageant sometimes they don't realize that actually pageantry is not just all about beauty and being exactly. beautiful on stage because there's so many things that you really need to consider and um, it's all about research at the end of the day, even like with catwalk and, you know, um, being on stage, you know, you can't just go on and expect I can be good already, you know, it really exactly. has a lot of practice, you know, and for me, I love watching a lot of pageant queens walk as well. So like I'll, as a dancer, for me, it's not difficult to actually pick up. So actually, I also have my own like, oh, so this I'm going to walk this way or this costume. <laughs> You're formulating your own walk. <laughs> yes, yes, I'm kind of figuring I'm my own pageant instructor, you know. <laughs> Because yeah, you're right. Um, like it's it's difficult to be on stage with all of the amazing people. I know all of you are unique and beautiful in your own way. But on stage, when you are there, you're just given this one minute chance of answering that particular question. How whether that a sim uh, that's a simple question or the most difficult one, it makes you shine when you get to say everything you have, like you have to say. You want to say in that one particular minute, and that gives you the crown. But yeah. right now that you're on virtual preliminaries and all this that you tend to show yourself and then you you're more reachable now than before like we don't get to to, uh, to talk to beauty queens like you and it's so special that now we, we're doing things virtually also i think that that's one of the good things that it does to you so this is your chance to shine and i believe that you have that something that can be seen on stage virtually <laughs> Thank I'm you. gonna be here. I'm gonna be here, uh, cheering you up like this. And of course, Thank I'm just you your so boyfriend. Right <laughs> <laughs> now that you talk about the whole virtual thing, I actually, I'm actually very thankful for this uh, current virtual platform because I feel that it definitely gave me some advantages. Um, maybe because of how authentic I am, I'm actually more. You know, because the problem of virtual is actually 2D. And yeah. I feel like maybe of my personality, it makes myself look more um, approachable even through a 2D screen. And I feel that it's been pretty... Um, I'm pretty thankful by all the love and support after the Earth Talk because mm -hmm. I, I seriously didn't expect the whole result after the Earth Talk because, you know, going with Miss Philippines, Roxy and Miss uh, Australia, Brittany, you know, and there were so many worries going on in my head because, you know, I was like, ah, Singapore, you know, I'm so worried, you know, I'm such a small pageant country as compared to these big 
passion lover countries and how yeah. like, no oh no it's and, like a breed of uh, beauty queens from their when they're little now to their beauty queens yes, yeah. beauty queens. <laughs> i know especially in philippines you guys you know you guys have kids passion have you know so many kind of different passion in a community center or like even in a random festival i i've, I've seen one when i was in philippines it was just a uh it was in Isabella City. It was even Manila, and there was a pageant going on. And I was like, "Wow, the well, what were you doing in Isabella? <laughs> Why were you there of all places? <laughs> That's like a suburb of uh, somewhere in Luzon. But yeah, yeah, what were you doing in Isabella? What were you there for? <laughs> like, I will go to Singapore for a New Year, like you know, big bang, because you know, Singapore, is Singapore. Like in the Philippines, when you when you go to Philippines, you go to beaches. What did you do in Isabella? Do you have like a family friends there? <laughs> no, actually, I, I actually went down because it was actually um, there was some. I was in I, I'm in a dance uh, crew in Singapore called uh, Limited oh. Edition. So there was actually a festival, an international festival, a dance festival, like a competition going on in the festival. So they oh. actually invited us to go down to join the competition. And you know, guess what? During that competition, it was in 2018, and I actually saw some of the Miss Earth. 2018 contestant oh, went down for the festival. What wow. thing, you know, because I miss <laughs> Singapore too. I know, I miss Singapore. I know. Wow. <laughs> what a coincidence is that? <laughs> what talented ladies you are. <laughs> I think it's, it's really fate at the end of the day, you know, all these surprises yeah. in, in life. You know, who knew? Because when I went down, I did saw the Miss Earth logo, the, the, the room that they were going to use for maybe dinner or something. They actually put out a Miss Earth logo and I actually took a photo with the logo with that oh, you know yeah. that post that they had and who knew that year me. after i missed earth water and now i I'm... miss earth singapore like i know <laughs> and that's destiny you know there are th there are things that become part of your life that makes an impact like the biggest impact and you don't know the reason until it hits you like now you were miss water a uh, miss uh, singapore water or miss earth last year so now you're the miss earth singapore so what do you think um what would you do the day after in case you win the crown let's claim it now it's yours <laughs> what will you do the oh. day after <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel like if the I won't even say the day after. I think the moment I were to win the crown, I mean mm -hmm. other than crying because I'm too happy, I probably <laughs> like I'll I, I hope I'll probably be one of them who can't um contain the movements, the joy in my body. And I think I would just like do a little dance because I'm so happy. Because even when I received the appointment of Miss Earth Singapore, I tell you I was dancing in my bedroom because I couldn't contain the excitement. So imagine Miss Earth 2020 is me. I think I would like do like some <laughs> big jump on stage. Like I don't care about the gowns. I'm Miss Earth 2020. <laughs> no. But yeah, you know when you were chosen miss earth singapore finally prior to announcing it to the public you had miss earth fire miss earth water uh yeah you were miss earth water miss earth air you had uh, four other lovely ladies with you what happened uh when you uh, before that like what made the, uh, the organization announced to you as you know uh, uh appointed miss earth singapore Okay, I can't really speak uh, um, the best um, because I'm not the, the director, of course. From your point of view. <laughs> from my point of view, because I'm was <laughs> I am best. <laughs> So I think that maybe it was, I think the whole background of me being a dancer and involved in the performing scene kind of like helped as well because um, it's definitely something that I have leveraged uh, as compared to my other elemental sisters and maybe that was what she see that it could actually help in this virtual pageant because now that it's virtually, maybe she wanted someone who is more... Um, maybe enjoys talking or like enjoys performing in front of people not afraid to showcase themselves if so maybe that was one of the reason that she um thought of me when she wanted to do the appointment for miss earth singapore mm -hmm. okay but that was really cool yeah like uh, among all the other girls oh <laughs> 
Christina Kais, Miss Earth, going to vie for the, how many other women would you vie for a crown, uh, Miss Earth crown? How many other women? Like I've seen, uh, I've seen the uh, European countries two days ago. I've seen um, Guyana yesterday. I've seen uh, Malaysia, Thailand. Uh, yeah, let's not talk about Miss Thailand. I've heard the, the news. <laughs> about it uh there's so many other candidates how many are you going to be in the in the pageant this year um i'm, I'm sure there isn't a full confirmed number yet because there are oh. still contestants coming up and certain countries um are announcing a bit later like if i'm right tomorrow it's uh miss sri lanka is being announced but if i were to look at the miss earth website and i tried to count i think it was about 79 contestants because Ooh. um there were a few countries that debuted this year so i think that was uh who are the new debut my brain just not working now but i know malaysia is not joining this year the the crown winner is actually um, comp um competing next year in the physical pageant oh. and finland did a comeback this year and a few other countries did a debut and i think it's going to be exciting because maybe people the whole virtual pageant allows them to stay in their home country which makes it very accessible to, for all of us because we don't need to sacrifice our own life Mm -hmm. to join the pageant so i think that's also a reason why so many countries are still going on with this international pageant like they didn't withdraw their the the, the participation for this pageant yeah, actually people are talking about it like uh, miss international is not happening miss world is not happening the only two of the four big international pageants that are pushing through is miss universe and then miss earth why do you think we need miss earth or miss universe this time of pandemic like, uh, why? <laughs> Among all the other things or problem that's happening around the world, why do we need Miss Earth? Like Miss Earth Singapore. <laughs> I, I, I think for me, I feel like one, one thing is also to show that, you know, the COVID can't stop us. <laughs> you know, things are still going to go on regardless what happened. You know, rest, you know, all of us are still living our life as usual regardless what's happening. So I guess that's also how this whole pageant thing is going to go on. You know, we're going to find ways. We're going to continue. We're going to find different ways to keep the event going. And also because for Miss Earth, you know, for me, the reason why I also want to participate despite it being a virtual pageant is to show people that, you know, regardless we're in lockdown or, um, you know, we can't travel regardless what's the reason. Environmental actions and causes are still should still be ongoing. It shouldn't be something that we stop just because it's lockdown, just because COVID is now a nut, the most urgent issue going on now because climate change has always been the most pressing issue. So right. it shouldn't be something that stopped just because, you know, oh, we can't travel out because of COVID, you know. So I yeah, think it's time well. for them. Especially now, it's a, a sort of entertainment. And at the same time, entertaining, you know, telling people that, hey, this pandemic going on, you need to be extra clean. And then now recycling is a key, you know, to survive all this. Um, okay, so I think we've known you better as a person now. So it's it's time for us to like read who are with us on the, this live session. Interview with a beautiful Miss Christina Kai. You look so beautiful, so fresh, 21 year old. <laughs> Uh, I'm, I'm saying hi to my family back home in Bacolod City. It's one of the islands in, Baco in, in the Philippines. And Lau, Jazz Juliet, I think people here, some people here, you know them. Chua Beng, who what? Love that the, uh, love, he loves you the way you answer questions, Christina. So Thank Christina, you. Uh, Jazz Juliet says, Christina is definitely a beautiful and talented dancer. She must have seen your moves. <laughs> she shines on stage. Thank you. You have that aura that's so happy on stage. And I, I believe that. I've seen that really. Lance with us, Diga, she's confidently beautiful. She's a beauty for a cause. <laughs> beauty oh, with a cause. Thank you her. so much. <laughs> Suzette says, can't wait to see another one too. This is Suzette, my sister-in-law who's here with me. <laughs> uh, Elizabeth says, uh, you're a wonderful human being. You're so cute. <laughs> Thank you're you. lovely okay so because we're we have like about five minutes uh, remaining on our um do you have a message to like uh, beauty queens uh, aspiring beauty queens to be like you uh do you have like a message for them to inspire them to join beauty pageants 
um, if I were to really tell them a message, I would say don't be afraid actually because I know that there are a lot of um, perception of what beauty queens are or like how they are and how um, how scary sometimes it may be. But actually, all beauty queens are just normal human beings. We all have normal jobs. We are all people in the society you know everyone can be a beauty queen as long they aspire as long they work hard for it and i want to tell them to don't be afraid but of course you know do some research before you join <laughs> but you know <laughs> yeah <laughs> It's best to come prepared because sometimes when you don't come prepared you you will really freak out you really be scared when you see other contestants who could probably join the pageant other pageants before this pageant that they join because you know even for international pageant you see many queens who this is not their first experience they actually had like other pre-existing pageantry that they did regardless it's in a school or in a community so i really want to tell them to don't be afraid do your research you know and also when you join be 100 percent committed because i've come across different situations like different like feedback of like um different viewpoints of pageant where they say that oh um you know pageantry is not fun you know full of um toxic goals going on and you know they say that oh don't join pageantry but i would say that you know when you were to look at it if you really want it you will work hard you put 100 percent, and even if you don't win it makes your experience good because you know that you've put in the best that you have you know it doesn't really matter like oh um whether i win or not because you know that this is the best that you have shown so regardless what's the result it, the experience will be good and that's what i really want them to actually see and not to see the bad side of pageantry because every year every batch is going to be different you know so it yeah. doesn't really dictate that pageantry it's toxic or bad you know at the end of the day it's a good platform for women to empower other women wow that's a good answer oh my god <laughs> <laughs> and because of that, see, 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 that answer made Annie Lau say, Miss Singapore is Miss Earth for a wonderful Christina Kai. Wow. Thank you. Wow. Answer. Good luck to my beautiful, to my beautiful. That's what she says. Good luck to my beautiful Christina Kai. Super proud of you with much love in Singapore. Uh, that's Annie Lau. My gosh, she, she said so much about you. Um, what else is here uh, I, I can't really browse up now for the comments but yeah so um so to those of you aspiring to be beauty queens just follow your heart like uh, yeah like what christina said you have to uh, you can be there and influence people it's a good platform to show your beauty and the actual the the authentic you and show show up on stage like it, it's it's like christina she, she dances on stage she doesn't care <laughs> So, be myself, supermodel. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um, uh, before I I ask you to invite them to support you, uh, is there like a votation? Uh, like, does the crowd who sees you virtually have a say on who's who's gonna win? Like my bet, for example, do I vote for you? In which platform is that? Do I have to vote vote for you? Oh, I I I'm. I, I know that they usually have like a online voting system, but usually um, they use um, the various social media like Facebook and Instagram. So um, mm -hmm. they haven't really told us if there are any online voting this year and if they are using any separate platform for that. But for sure, do look out on Miss Earth Facebook and Instagram for any further updates because, you know, they've been churning out lots of new um, content for everyone because now that it's a virtual passion so they're currently you know putting up various eco videos eco angel photos so yeah do follow the their facebook and instagram okay cool and then if you want to talk christina she has christina kai facebook and on instagram i don't i'm not so quite clear where you are on instagram because you know there's a lot of christina kai maybe they are your fans or those are fan pages but yeah she's very visible on her facebook page yes so right now i want you uh like i have i have uh i'll throw you two words which are like choices for you to say something okay so like for example um do you prefer rain or sunshine yeah so i'll, I'll give you two words and then you choose okay so let, let's let's start off with hot tea or iced tea 
Ice tea. Okay. Uh, Beyonce, Rihanna. Beyonce. <laughs> eat to live, live to eat. Live to eat all, uh, all the time. <laughs> <laughs> and there's justification on time. <laughs> two piece or dress? So, sorry, could you repeat? So sorry. Two piece, uh, two piece or dress? Dress. Dress or swimwear. Okay. Breakfast or dinner? Dinner. Instagram, Snapchat. Instagram. Uh, obviously, TikTok, Snapchat. <laughs> um, TikTok. <laughs> And before we go on, you know, if you guys want to follow me on Instagram, oh, it's yeah. X-T-I-N-A underscore Christina. You know, Christina Aguilera, Xtina. Yeah, so yeah. Xtina underscore Christina. Yeah. That's why I couldn't find you. That's why I couldn't find you. I keep following the Christina guy. Okay, and there's a lot of different ones that are like uh, designers and stuff. Anyway, bath or shower? Shower. True love, $10 million. <laughs> it's hard. You're a millionaire. You don't need ten million anymore. <laughs> I mean, it me. depends on situation. Be currently, be currently, <laughs> currently looking at financial wise, ten million dollars. <laughs> I'm sorry, Walter. It's, uh, <laughs> stop it's used to it. You know, there were other questions asking me whether I would um, choose my partner or uh, the Miss of Crown, and I've been answering Miss of Crown. <laughs> so $10 million for this, too. <laughs> <laughs> I can't say no to $10 million. Coffee, uh, free coffee, free Wi Fi, or free Walter? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? What just happened? <laughs> Free coffee, free Wi-Fi, or free Walter? <laughs> free Wi-Fi? <laughs> I couldn't get rid of Walter somewhere on the choice. I mean, I mean, Walter it doesn't come with a price, right? I mean, he's with me for life. <laughs> wow. Yeah, and I, I was like, oh, when I was talking Walter, I was like, oh, this, these two are so sweet, like in a relationship with Walter. So, so it was very easy to find him. It was very easy to see him now. <laughs> right? He's right there with you. <laughs> Okay, so uh, being a, an arts uh, a student, uh, painting or writing? Painting. Music or movie? Movies. Okay, sweet. Oh, okay, right. Text or call? Text. iPhone, Android? Android. I'm a proud Android user. I have not used a single Apple phone yet. Really? Yes, I, I, I've, I've never I owned an iPhone. Android. <laughs> right? And I don't even know how to use the iPhone. <laughs> Coke or Pepsi? Hmm. Pepsi. Right. Okay, cool. Thank you for being a sport, uh, Christina Kai, our Miss Earth Singapore. Um, okay, where else could they support you? Um, where could we see you in the following weeks prior to the November 29 actual uh, Miss Earth pageant virtually? You can, um, for everyone who would love to support me and, you know, even all the other ecosystems for this pageant, of course, Miss Earth Facebook and Instagram for the official events and official photos and activities. But if you want to follow me close and personal, you can follow me at my Facebook, Christina Chai, and on my Instagram, at, at X-T-I-N-A underscore Christina. Yes. Thank hey, you. Cool. I'm gonna follow you on Instagram for sure. Yeah. And I'm gonna yeah. you have all my you have my full support on November 29. I'm gonna be watching you. So good luck. And uh, I wish you all the best on stage on your virtual stage. Thank you. Thank you so much. I hope that I do get into top 20. I hope. <laughs> that's that's my that's my yeah. minimum. <laughs> Be yourself, like the way you are now. You're so fun. And I'm sure the, the judges are going to like you. So, yes. Thank you so much, Miss Christ Christina Chai. Le le yeah. So, so, this C is like with this. Oh, it's a sort of like Turkish uh, pronunciation. Miss Christina Chai, our Miss Earth Singapore 2020. Please support her. Uh, follow her so you can support her all her activities at the Miss Earth 2020. Thank you so much, everyone, and all the Maharlikans who have joined us today. Thank you to uh, <laughs> the boyfriend. 
<laughs> thank you to your boyfriend for bringing you there for us to see you and talk to you right now. Thank you so much, Miss Earth, Singapore, Miss Christina, Chai. Good luck. And bye. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. Bye.